Trust me when I say that White Star is probably the most beloved shipping line among the community I refer to as the boat people. It's just a fact of life that some ships have more interesting tales to tell than others, and notoriety among these transatlantic shipping lines seems to come with having lots of these stories. Titanic, Britannic, Atlantic, Suvic, Naronic, Oceanic, Moronic, all of these vessels have their own unique stories, and all are White Star liners. With the earlier steamers of the White Star line seeming to get more attention from the community low these many months, I figured, eh, I'll jump on too. The RMS Majestic and RMS Teutonic serviced hundreds of thousands of people in their careers, and neither of them ever met some tremendous disaster that brought them unwanted infamy. Their fame is entirely from their own success, as it should be. Now I feel like I call a lot of ships revolutionary, but you haven't seen how revolutionary these ships are. They're giving the French a run for their money. The first change of significance is visible just by a comparison to the class that preceded the Teutonic Twins, that being the Coptic class. Look at the SS Coptic. Notice these? Square, rig, sails. Pretty standard stuff for the time. They had these for extra speed and calm conditions, and pretty much every White Star liner is equipped with them, in addition to steam engines. Oh, except for these guys. The Teutonic Twins entirely did away with square rig sails. Steam power would now carry them. Not only that, they ran entirely on not only one, but two propellers. The first White Star liners to boast twin screw propulsion. The future has arrived. Please note that they didn't entirely get rid of sails, but now they wouldn't be a primary method of propulsion. The next change of significance for the Teutonic Twins is the introduction of a three-class system. The traditional method of divvying up passengers was having a saloon class for the rich people and a steerage class for the poor people. There would be no more of that. A middle class was added on the Teutonic Twins and an entirely new labeling system was added with it. First, second, and third. My friends, the world is changing, and with the Industrial Revolution in full swing, a middle class seems to have squeezed its way into the system. Don't hate White Star for taking advantage of it. The removal of primary sail-based power from the Teutonic Twins is a pretty significant change already, but a change to the entire class system of ocean liners is a serious paradigm shift in the social structure of the world on the waves. This has prompted many maritime historians, which is an incredibly specific field, to declare the Teutonic Twins as a new generation of ships, the start of the third generation of White Star liners. They were also wicked fast, even without square rig sails, and both would hold the blue ribbon at one time or another. Now for passengers, it would be a treat to sail aboard the Majestic or Teutonic, no matter what class. Starting off, we have third class, which is standard steerage stuff. Nine compartments all housed in the lower hull, with single women in the forward end of the ship and single men berthed in the stern. In the middle, you've got families and married couples, meant to act as a barrier between the single women and the potentially misbehaving single men. The fourth compartment actually has private family cabins housing two and four berth cabins. Third class with private cabins. Who would have thunk it? Revolutionary. Third class accommodated about 1,000 persons, most of whom would rest in open areas loaded with beds and benches, like this. Now to visit the brand new second class. Now they've got it a little bit better than third. They're moving up in the world. Second class passengers laid their heads in the second highest deck of Teutonic Twins, all of whom had private cabins. Don't expect anything grand like a swimming pool or a monkey butler, it's still the 1880s. I'm pretty sure that Betty White wasn't even born yet. Second class wasn't grand or gorgeous, it was simply cozy, accommodating 190 people. Now first class, that's where it's at capable of holding 300 rich aristocrats in very spacious cabins more comparable to the modern era of ocean liners. Some cabins were connected for large families like they do in hotels. This was also a new thing for ships. First class cabins were in the three uppermost decks of Teutonic Twins, and unlike third class, they were situated far from the engines for a more smooth and comfortable ride. Now the Teutonic Twins have one more item of notoriety to acknowledge, and that's that the RMS Teutonic, the first ship in the class, was the first passenger ship designed for easy conversion to an armed merchant cruiser. Armed merchant cruisers were commercial vessels that transformed into ships of war, only with a little paint and the installation of guns. Having the first ship to be purpose-built for conversion is pretty significant, as most subsequent British ocean liners would copy them too, mostly to get grants from the British government. See humanity, you've always been about money. It doesn't really matter anyway, armed merchant cruisers proved to be very ineffective in actual combat. Finally, let's dive into careers. The aforementioned RMS Teutonic was the first of the Teutonic twins and had her first tale to tell before she was even completed. When future King Prince Albert Edward oversaw the opening of the new Alexandra graving dock at Harland and Wolf, he did so from the Bridge of Teutonic. 
The Teutonic was designated to replace the aging SS Baltic and was completed in late July. Things are not all that they seem, however, for she was completed as a passenger ship and a warship. She had 4.7-inch guns mounted on her deck and functioned as an armed merchant cruiser for her first two weeks of existence. Why? In early August of 1889, Kaiser Wilhelm II met with his cousin Edward and his grandmother Queen Victoria for the Spithead Naval Review. Basically, the Kaiser would look at some cool ships for two days. The RMS Teutonic stole the show and resulted in Kaiser Willie saying, We must have some of these. Some say the RMS Teutonic was the inspiration for Germany to build the Kaiser class of ships. So that's pretty neat, I guess. Maybe even a video idea in there. The Kaiser was on board for only two hours, and immediately after, they took the guns off and she left on her maiden voyage only a day later. Two years later, on the 19th of August in 1891, the RMS Teutonic stole the Blue Ribbon, an intangible award signifying the fastest crossing of the Atlantic. Who did she steal it from? We'll get there. Teutonic's westbound crossing was 5 days, 16 hours, and 31 minutes, and she held the Blue Ribbon for 11 months before the SS city of Paris nabbed it from her. Teutonic was the final White Star Liner to hold the Blue Ribbon ever, but this isn't exactly surprising, as the line decided to prioritize comfort over speed starting in the 1890s. Teutonic was first in many things, but she was also the final of many traditions. In January of 1895, the crew of Teutonic rescued the crew of a sinking schooner called the Josie Reeves in a harsh winter storm. Her crew was honored by the Life-Saving Benevolent Association of New York for their valiance, having remained in harsh waters through a blizzard and even trying to use a lifeboat to rescue the struggling fishermen. Teutonic's already killing it in her early career. In 1897, the Teutonic was converted into an armed merchant cruiser and participated in Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, once again being boarded by future King Prince Albert Edward. In 1900, when actual war broke out, she was converted into a troop transport ship for the Second Boer War and she fulfilled her role without incident. That was until a rogue wave knocked the lookouts clean into the cold sea in February of 1901. It also happened at night, so the rescue was no easy triumph. Miraculously, both survived. Teutonic was converted back into a commercial ocean liner when the war ended in 1902, and soon after she was struck by lightning and it split her mast, briefly blinding the captain in the process and causing him to think there was an explosion. In July of 1905, a terrible yet slightly comedic situation occurred while she was docked at her pier in New York. She had somehow caught fire and her storekeeper, John Burns, was discovered to be trapped in his cabin, shouting to firefighters who were trying to put out the fire. Apparently, he woke up and saw the wall of the electrician's cabin next to him was burning. Already a slightly awkward situation, but the way the firefighters kept him alive, and this is entirely true, is that they just splashed him with a ton of water every few minutes to cool him down. I like to think that it was from a bucket through a porthole. The cycle went on for half an hour of just being dunked with water every now and again. I know it seems bad to find that amusing in any way, but they just splashed him every now and again. And with a name like John Burns, you know he was destined to have a musical made about him trapped in a burning room. He lived, if you're curious. That's why I'm allowed to joke about it. They also rescued two unconscious stokers from the flames. Neat stuff. The vessel managed to be put out in time for her next voyage on August 2nd. The Teutonic was moved from Liverpool to Southampton in 1907, along with the rest of the White Star fleet, and began her new route with her running mates the Oceanic and the Adriatic. In August, a stoker jumped overboard from supposedly going insane from the heat. He lived, if you're curious. With the maiden voyage of RMS Olympic, Teutonic was moved to the Liverpool to Montreal route, now running routes to Canada instead of America, starting this route on May 13th. Teutonic dodged an iceberg by 20 feet in 1913, only a year after the Titanic disaster. With the outbreak of World War I, she was converted into an armed merchant cruiser to finally be used for what she was capable of 25 years in the making. The British government bought her in 1915, and she was transformed to run routes from Egypt to Great Britain as a transport ship, oddly enough still being managed by the White Star Line despite new owners. She was sold and scrapped in Emden in 1921. Now on to the second of the Teutonic Twins, the RMS Majestic. No, not that one. She had her maiden voyage on April 2, 1890, and caught fire three months later while loading on cotton bales. She was put out if you're curious. Alright, remember when I said the Teutonic stole the blue ribbon? I don't really know why I'm acting all sneaky about it, Teutonic stole it from her sister. That's right, Majestic held the blue ribbon in 1891. For two weeks. Then Teutonic came along. In 1894, Majestic rammed and sank a schooner called the Antelope, killing two of its crew members. So far, Majestic ain't doing so well. She seems like the anti-Teutonic. This was a short-lived reputation, however, as something far more interesting would occur in 1895. The great captain, Edward John Smith, was assigned to Majestic, and would serve in this capacity for nine years. 
If that name doesn't sound familiar to you, E.J. Smith was the captain of Titanic on its first and final voyage, the captain himself being a victim of the disaster. In 1902, the Majestic went in for a few upgrades, most noticeably having her finals lengthened, presumably to make her appear more modern when compared to newer White Star liners. She also had new boilers installed and one of her masts removed, and in 1907, she too was moved to Southampton. On April 5, 1908, the Majestic rescued the crew of a stranded tanker called the Helios. See, she wasn't all bad. Majestic was placed on reserve with the maiden voyage of the Olympic in 1911. A lesser-known White Star liner sank in 1912, and this resulted in Majestic having to replace her, a position she would fill for two years. While in this capacity, Majestic rescued the crew of a sinking French schooner known as Garonne. Despite a pretty clean career, Majestic's final voyage was an absolute mess. While leaving Cherbourg, a tender struck her side and damaged a coaling port. And while docking for one last time in New York, she struck the tugboat John Nichols, sinking it with fire reportedly spilling out of its engine room. In January of 1914, she was sold to T. Ward to finally be broken up. She was used as a tourist attraction that summer by her shipbreakers, and was finally scrapped by 1915. Now what exactly is significant about the Teutonic Twins? Well, other than their innovation and their habit of saving crews of sinking ships, the Teutonic Twins were the first White Star liners to embrace more modern ship design. They were a sign that big change was on the way, that the world was changing and White Star was willing to take the leap into the future. I'd like to thank Matching User for the video suggestion of doing a video on the Teutonic class. Thank you. So what did we learn? Innovators will not be forgotten. Innovate, and you shall not be forgotten either.